investment, right? Uh, it is always a big uh, uh, purchase. So that's why uh, when you want to purchase the projects or properties, please do talk to our salesperson, understands uh, the risk involved and also financially calculation. So all these things are, are important for you. And of course, the material that uh, we are given tonight are, are all uh, carefully crafted, uh, but please, uh, they are also copyright. Uh, so please uh, do inform us if you want to use them uh, for your own uh, presentation for the future. Okay. So what are the five golden keys? Okay. It is very important to know that keys open up uh, the door for the property that you're going to purchase. Okay. So how come there are five? In fact, I do have more pointers for this, but these five that I've gathered are so-called the most important factors. So what are they? Um, they are not figures or facts. Uh, in fact, these are the random of the topics that uh, you need to know in order for you to make a wise decision in investing into your property purchase. So these five keys, they could be the way how to preserve value for the property. Uh, it could be how to decide uh, which type of the uh, unit that you want to invest into, okay? So that's why uh, the keys that are going to present to tonight, the five of them consist on, first one, it's a time key, okay? The second, it's the value key. The third is a life key. The fourth is a love key. I'm not talking about relationship, but I'm talking about property. And the last one is the key, which is the most important key, okay? So uh, bear with me for the next uh, 60 minutes or, or so, so that I will go through with you these five very important keys uh, for tonight's session. Okay, are you ready for the very first key? Okay, so uh, to make tonight's uh, session more interactive, okay, please, uh, I want you to be involved as well. Okay, so uh, I want you to also uh, ask yourself, so what kind of keys is Chris talking about? So you just help me, just repeat after me, just saying that, do I have the correct time key? Okay, so this will help you to understand more of the topic that I'm going to discuss. So when we talk about time, okay, most of us will know that uh, investment is very important and it's very time sensitive. Okay, so what kind of time are we talking about? Is it the correct time to invest in the property? Uh, when is the time to invest in the correct property? Are you, are you time yet to buy into a property? Okay, so when we look at time, there is something that we have to track back, which is a bit of history. Okay, so I think this scenario that you are seeing here, uh, we have not seen this kind of tentage uh, in the past maybe one year due to COVID. Uh, this was taken before COVID uh, in one of the showroom, uh, uh, this uh, balloting exercise that we opened up our show, uh, showroom for purchase. And now actually, uh, if you, because we are not doing the booking uh, remotely in various locations. So if I were to put in everyone into the uh, same tentage like, like this for now, I just tell you, I think this tentage is not enough to put people in. Okay, because uh, from the past one year for 2020, where our booking are done uh, remotely in various offices and show flats, uh, the amount of people, we have to do our booking until almost about 7 p.m. at night, all the way from uh, morning of 9 to 10 a.m. So imagine the number of people that are looking into property purchase in this current moment. So this is a very rosy picture, but I want to bring you back uh, to some time, which I wasn't born yet, and hopefully yeah, you were not born yet as well. Singapore property wasn't like this, okay? Uh, in fact, when I first joined the real estate almost 20 years ago, it wasn't like this. There was a period of time where the government are trying to encourage people to buy into property, okay? So I just want to track back into the cold period of Singapore property environment, okay? So of course, uh, just a quick one, started since when? since 1968, okay. So I did some research and found out that actually the Singapore property events has been happening for a very long time, okay. So since then, the government is trying to encourage uh, Singaporeans to invest in the property as a form of home and as a form of savings as well and investment, okay. So they encourage people to use CPF funds uh, to, to buy into a property. And then uh, in the 1996, uh, Singapore government actually uh, uh, have put in some uh, measures for anti-speculation. So because they want the property to be very healthy. So they put in anti-speculation uh, measures, like for example, uh, cap of the LTV ratios and some penalties. But things were a bit different starting from 1997. 
So what happened then? That is a time that I think most of you have not heard this before. Singapore actually has a lot of property heating measures. Now we have the property cooling measures, but there were a period of time that Singapore had property heating measures, means trying to heat up the market because the market was too cold. So especially during the Asian financial crisis, uh, there is also in some countries, we call it the Tong Yang Kong crisis, okay, uh, which started in Asia. And uh, the property market was badly affected due to the collapse of the whole economy, okay, in the Singapore, in, in the region-wide and also worldwide, okay. So uh, if, if you see the highlight in, in red, sometimes the government even uh, deferred stamp duty for sellers, okay. This is something that you may not have uh, heard of for a long time. Then continue, the market was not hot enough, the government still trying to uh, heat it up by uh, have some property exemptions for some industrial, some residential properties, stamp duty deferment for buyers who buy into new projects. Then continue even the year 2000, which is the, uh, uh, we call that the uh, Y2K uh, uh, situation. Uh, the time wasn't that good as well. So the government also gives some property tax rebate, uh, trying to encourage people to invest in the property. Okay, and 2001, another big blow, which is the collapse of the dot-com, okay, the dot-com bubble. Uh, at the time, uh, the, the same year, we also hit with the 911, which happened in the, in the States. So the whole economy was quite bad, and the government, they actually removed some like capital gain tax, combined into property investment, uh, property tax again was exempted, and things like that, okay. So what you can see here is that this was the period that we see a lot of events where the government is trying to heat up the property market. Uh, but there's one thing that is in common, okay? Most of the events that happen, okay, are due to external factors. For example, the dot-com crisis, uh, even uh, this uh, Asian economic crisis. So because of, the, of this, uh, the government have to react, but mostly due to the external factors, okay? But currently, if you can see what I've just presented to you on the screen here, uh, this is what we are very familiar with, especially for the past 11 years. Do you know how long our Singapore property cooling measures has been in place? It started since year 2010. Okay, yeah, 20, yeah, correct, 2010. So now it's already 2021. And look at all these cooling measures, some, some red, some black, some blue, some, you know, uh, orange. These are actually the different measures that the, company, uh, the, the, the government put in place. So, the whole thing that we are happening now is due to the fact that the market okay, was a bit overheated. Okay? So the government is very afraid that uh, it may go, the price is out of control. So the government did the opposite by cooling the property, uh, uh, our second property. So you now we call it the cooling measures. But do you know what is the difference between now and before 2010? The difference is that most of these measures Okay, uh, caught, uh, also uh, created by, uh, by us, okay? by government, uh, by the market. So it is not actually reflected the real kind of uh, property in, in Singapore. Okay? In other words, the whole situation now is like putting the, the, the demand of purchase is so high. And uh, in order to contain the price not to go uh, beyond control, so we put into a pressure cooker okay? so that everything is under control. But even with this situation, you still realize that if you look at our 3Q, uh, the 4Q uh, flash estimates, the market is still increasing in terms of the property price index. So I give a, this, this scenario a term, okay? It's called artificially suppressed situation. So, which means that the market is very hot, too many people want to buy. In order for the market to contain the price not to be too heated up, uh, we put our policies to contain it, okay? So because what does a, uh, what does a, a pressure cooker do? Okay, a pressure cooker actually uh, cook things faster, right? Same thing. Because of this situation, we are seeing that the Singapore property cycles are actually, uh, the cycles are shorter. Last time we used to say that a property cycle is about 10 year cycle, okay? But now in fact, uh, we are seeing the cycle are very, very shortened to even half of it or even lesser. Okay, so there are a lot of these uh, opportunities that is in place here, but in general, if you can see the whole chart of the property cycle is still going up. Okay, so this is the latest uh, property price index that the government uh, released, which is until the end of 2020. 
the 2020, uh, 2024 Q is actually the fresh, fresh estimates. Okay, so you look at this. The, at the end of the red color chart, okay, you can see my mouse here. Okay, that is actually uh, the last three quarters that we have seen. Property prices is still uh, very strong, even with the cooling measures in place for the past 10 to 11 years. Okay, so now let's, let's play a game together. Okay, with this, okay, how many of you think that the property price from now onwards, okay, it is on the uptrend, okay, or do you think that the property price from now onwards is going to be a downtrend, okay? And how many of you think that the property price index will just be remain the same for the next one to five years, for example, okay? So of course, today I cannot do a live uh, uh, vote with all of you, but this, this uh, answers, I can show you uh, what we did uh, for the previous uh, sessions where we have live audience uh, that is a uh, uh, physical audience here. A lot of time, okay, if you are a buyer, you think that you want the property price, you believe that the property price index will go up or come down, okay? Of course, you will think that the property price index will go up, so that, that's why you buy now. But if you're a seller, okay, you sure think that the property price index will come down, if not, you will not be selling now. But the true answer is that no one of us know what is the line is going to be like for the next one year or five years or 10 years, okay? The, the, the fact that the property price index determines by the market, Okay, so what is a market? A market is that you have a willing buyer, we have a willing seller. When both parties agree on the price, that is where we have a transactions. Only with the transactions, it determines what the property price index will look like. Okay, so that's why it's a very unique thing that we are seeing here. Okay, but however, later on the last part, you will see that the key, that is the time that you think of the continuation of the dotted line. Is it going out or coming down? Okay, so I will not review uh, the answer until the the fifth key that we're going to talk about, okay? So this is the current timing, which I repeat again, we are under uh, artificially suppressed condition of our Singapore property market due to all the cooling measures. Seriously, without the cooling measures, the property price index uh, will not be what our salesperson have been telling you for, uh, for the past one week in non metan Park, okay? The price index will sure be much, much higher than this. Uh, so that's why, uh, if you ask me, uh, with all these years of experience, am I happy having the property price uh, being monitored and controlled? In a way, yes. Okay, so that our property, uh, would, our property bubble will not burst. Okay, that is a very scary thing. That if the property bubble bursts. Okay, but of course, some of you who have invested in properties before, or still owning some properties, you may be imposed by the additional buyer stamp duty. Okay, uh, that is something that I also explained in the fifth key because the additional buyer stamp duty is actually. Uh, it's, it's something not too bad. Okay, I know we have to pay more money, but not too bad because without all these cooling measures, the price that we see today may be beyond control. Okay, so that's why uh, this is something that I want to share with you for the very first key, the time key. Okay, and the uh, government has released uh, the 3Q flash estimate for 2020. And you will know that uh, the flash estimates that our Singapore private property prices is still on the uptrend. Okay, even with uh, COVID in place, uh, as of today, where we speak. Okay, so the second key, okay? The second key, please repeat after me. Do I have the correct value key? Okay, so what is a value key? Okay, sometimes I, I wonder, uh, which I talk to customers and even agent, uh, they will be telling me that, hey, this property is very expensive. Um, so I would like to ask this question. What do you mean by expensive? Okay, um, to, my, to my understanding, when we are comparing apple to apple, like exactly the same product, okay, same thing, same color, same size, same sweetness, same origin, then one could be more expensive than the other one. But property is something that's very unique. Even in the same development, okay, a high floor unit uh, facing the open city versus a low floor unit facing the garden. There are two different units and the price value is also different. But Project A and Project B, okay, within the same vicinity. Project A using a better material, Project B using a more generic material. So Project A want to sell at a higher price and people will say that Project A is more expensive, but there are two different projects, okay? So this value thing is very unique in terms of um, how to determine it, especially for real estate, okay? So that's why, but the value, what, what is the best determination for a value? To me, okay, it's, what kind of value that this property has for you, 
Okay, so, so let's say you're a buyer. Okay, so why are you buying a property? Okay, why are you considering buying into a unit in Normanton Park, especially for example? Okay, so that's why this will suit you the best. So I want to identify what are the reasons that a buyer buy into a property. Okay, so for you uh, as a buyer, please look at which category you belong to. Okay, first category. Some buyer buy is because for a peace of mind. Uh, yes, uh, some of you, you have been still renting a place for the many, many years. Uh, you may want to have a place to call home, okay? especially you will not be worried about your landlord uh, going to sell away your property and you have to shift house. Shift house is quite troublesome. Trust me, I just shifted house and I, the unpacking and packing is a headache. Okay? And actually, I just want to share this with you. Lately, uh, I was quite sad hearing some news uh, in the market, uh, especially uh, through some agents that I know of is that um, uh, when the COVID-19 happened, uh, when the circuit breaker happened, we do have uh, some landlords uh, who ask uh, their tenant, okay, which is uh, uh, in, the hospital, in the hospital line, like nurses or doctor, to move out of the property, uh, be it room renter or be a whole house renter. Uh, so the one has been settled. Uh, now lately, uh, what I receive is that there are some landlords asking uh, the, the air crew Okay, uh, the uh, pilots, uh, the captains, to move out from the house. Okay, so to me, it is quite sad that this thing happened uh, because you know they have no choice. This is their job, and now they have no place to stay. So we do not want you to also end up to a situation like that. You know, uh, someday. So that's why some people are thinking of they should have their own place so that they will not be bothered by uh, moving house. Uh, without their, 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 their choice, okay? So this is one of the reasons that why people buy into a property, okay? So are you one of these reasons? It could be, okay? The second reason that people buy into a property, it could be for aspiration, okay? So uh, like for example, if currently you do not have a house, okay? And then you, you want to buy into a property like Normanton Park, okay? It is uh, so that this is your dream home. Same thing, some of you who have currently having a HDB, Okay, which you've stayed there for many years already. And then you want to upgrade uh, your, your lifestyle. Okay? So you want to be aspired to own a prior property. That's why you're looking into buying into a uh, Northampton Park. The third reason for people buying is into lifestyle. Okay? So for example, currently you may have a, a, a lender house, okay? but because your lender house do not have pool, gym, and things like that, and your family and yourself want to enjoy all these things. So you rather sell away your lender house and move into a condominium with a lot of facilities. I mean, you, I think you should know, Novena Park is one of the projects that I've ever seen to have 100 over facilities in a project. So, but this is something that triggers people buy into a, a property, okay? Another reason is that Sometimes competition among peers or friends or family, okay? Like your friends or colleagues who have already upgraded, you know, now already stay in the condominium and you yourself, you know, uh, wants to keep up with them. So you also say, no, this year, I, no matter what, I must move myself and buy into a private property so that I can show off to my friends. I mean, seriously, this is the, the more expensive the property is, this is something that we see all the time. Okay, so that's why a lot of, uh, the, the way we sell into a property that is in a very prime area, like District 9, 10, or Orchard area, uh, is quite different. Um, sometimes we say that if the property is not expensive enough, it's hard to sell. Okay? That's why, because we have uh, some buyers uh, looking into this uh, reason of buying the property. Okay, and we also have, of course, this is a very generic, buying for property as a form of investment. Okay, so you're not going to stay there, you're going to just be there and rent a property and collect rent. But, even buying into a home for your own use, uh, it is also a form of investment, okay? And for this pointer here, I always like to encourage the younger you are, the, the earlier you should invest in the property. The reason is because looking into the current Singapore uh, policies, okay, especially financing policies, you realize that um, the, 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 more, the older you get, the harder you get a loan, okay? Or how to get a maximum loan that you want to, okay? So that's why, uh, for those of you who are in the younger age, please start early, okay? Uh, the banker will, will tell you the earlier you are, the easier for you to get a loan now and as a maximum because of your, of your age and your income, okay? So, and that's why for these five reasons of people buying into property, uh, I just have one thought. In fact, for Normanton Park, it's one of the projects that 
I can fit all these five scenarios of buyers buying into this project here. Okay, um, I have been launching many, many projects. Hardly a lot of projects can fit all these five into it. Okay, so that's why it's very interesting for me to give today's uh, uh, Zoom session with you of uh, this, this thing here. So that is a value of a buyer buying into a property which is like yourself. Okay, but do you know that um, a lot of time, we as an agent for our customer, we have a problem. When the seller asks us to sell that property, sometimes, just to share with you, in our heart, we will say that, why on earth this customer bought the property like this, you know, maybe 10 years ago, okay? Because from our experience, we will know that this kind of property is very, very difficult to sell just because there is no market that the buyer wants to buy into this kind of property, okay? So in order for the, the, the second key here, it's order for me to share with you how to have a more a proven way, okay? That you do not have problem selling off your purchase, okay? It's to think opposite, okay? What do I mean by thinking opposite? Okay, so let's say that you yourself, you love nature, okay? And assuming that Pulau Ubin is open for you to buy a house there, you love it, you don't mind to have a kayak from the mainland to Ubin every day, okay? You don't mind to have a house in Ubin, you don't mind there's no grocery, there's no cinema, there's nothing there because you love nature, okay? So you bought a house in Ubin. 10 years later, you want to sell. Can I ask you, how many people will want to buy your house because of the, the fact that it is in Pulau Ubin? Okay, this is something that you must seriously consider. Okay, because we have a lot of units that is very hard to sell just because the, the buyer then made a wrong decision of buying into a property or project that will be very difficult for us to sell eventually. Okay, so. Uh, I mean, you, you may say that oh, you're not buying a property just to flip. Yes, of course. But, but unfortunately comes if you want to sell or you need to sell. Okay, this, this pointer is very, very important. So now since you're a buyer, I must just share this with you. When you're a buyer considering buying something, please think of yourself as a seller. So now let's say you buy into Normanton Park. Who will be the seller five years or 10 years down the road? Okay, and again, this is a project that I don't see any problem for selling because of the scale of facilities and the amenities there. Okay, that I will share this with you. So you have to practice yourself if you are not um, a savvy investor yet, okay? Think as a seller, think as a landlord. Who will rent your property when you collect a house key, okay? Uh, where are the tenants from, okay? Are this group of tenants someone that you want to deal with? Okay, like for example, if your property is renting to a group of students versus uh, expats, which group of people that you want to rent it to? So that will determine what kind of property you're going to invest. Okay, so this, this I call it thing opposite. Okay, so that's why it's important for you to start thinking. Okay, so for Normanton, okay, Normanton Park especially, uh, the, the location there do not have a lot of other residential that is at this scale. Okay. And in fact, it is right next to the science park. And also it's very near to uh, this uh, official police and all these uh, new uh, uh, business hubs in the area there. So that's why I don't think there is a problem getting a tenant or eventually when you want to sell a property, this is the location that will help you because it is very strategically located in the place where people will just want to stay there. Okay. It's very, very near to the office in the surrounding there. Okay. So that's why when you think, put yourself as a seller's position, then you will make a very wise decision of which project to buy, okay? So we also call this thing called the exit strategy, okay? Uh, who will buy, who will rent, and of course, the location is the most important, okay? And of course, uh, this is something that you need to, uh, to, to, to think uh, tonight, you know, uh, take this as a bedtime story, and then you will start thinking about this. Okay, the third key, okay? It's something that, uh, please repeat after me, do I have the correct live key? Okay, so what do you mean by live? No, no, I'm going to not taking your whole life into just buying one property or whatever. The live key that what I meant here is that, do you know that human being, you and me, okay, will not outlive a property, okay, a house. Property will be there, okay, even though when we are gone, okay. So that's why it's very important to make the right decision of, how to, how to keep the value of the property uh, for the longest ever that you can 
uh, that, 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 that can help you to uh, conserve the value of the property. So uh, this is really from my real experience. Uh. Uh, there are properties, for example, uh, landmark in the world, okay, from Kuala Lumpur to London to whatever, you know that every location in the world has its landmark building. Okay? Now, think deeply uh, where you are from. Okay? You could be from companies, you could be from Jurong, from Clementi, even from Woodlands or Yishun. In your area, are there one or two developments that you, you can remember, okay, you can recall? Okay? Uh, so let's say, if you talk about orchard area, okay, which residential tower that you, you can remember? Okay? The most prominent is actually the ion, the, the ion, which is called ion, but the residential on top is called uh, these uh, uh, orchard residences. Okay? Even though it's a 99 leasehold property, but do you know that the price is more expensive than a lot of freehold properties in orchard area? Okay? Why? Because every day, day in, day out, people from Singapore, people from around the world can see the building. Okay? So, first thing, uh, can see the building. Now, if you talk about Shenton Way, okay, of course, Shenton Way is no residential, but Shenton Way has a lot of offices. Same theory applies to office tower as well. Okay, so UOB Tower, you know, OCBC Tower, all these things are very prominent. That's why we always get a lot of MNCs uh, telling us that they want to rent an office in this location there. How about if you go to Marina Bay? Which project that stands out the most? Okay, the one that looks like the sale. Okay, it's called the sale at Marina. Okay, so even being the same marina being the first building, okay, that is being developed, and especially the first residential project that is being sold to the public in Marina Bay area, it is still demand a very good rental and price. Okay, so a lot of the owners there are making a very handsome income and uh, profit based on this. Okay, because if you look at Singapore skyline, this project there, every people can see, everyone from the world can see. Okay, same thing. If you look at Keppel Bay area, okay, we have reflections at Keppel, okay, which is also very prominent. That's why this is also the one of the top search projects uh, always, uh, which is compiled by Business Times. Okay? And lastly, if I ask you about Normanton, okay, which project you think? It's actually Normanton Park. Okay? Because why? Normanton has been, you know, it's an on-block site, and this project has been there for a very, very long time. So for Singaporeans, we know when we talk about Normanton, is this condo Normanton. That's why we also name it Normanton Park. And even the AYE, when you exit, it is called Normanton. Okay, so that's why it is a very, very prominent. So why are these things so important? Okay, I'm going to show you this. Okay, every property, if you want to sell well, not today, but five years, 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, or let's say the longest, 50 years down the road, it must have a story to attach to it to sell. So if you are in sales line, you know, okay, we need to have a lot of stories to, to sell something, okay? But real stories are that is valuable. The first thing, the first pointers that you must remember is that a project that is more iconic, okay, it always will draw the attention of the people around, okay? People, day in, day out, pass by, walk by, they will not forget about this project, okay? So iconic being the location and prominent, Okay, so that's why Normanton being such a big project, uh, if you drive along AYE, you would not miss this project as someone is going to be very high rise now. Okay, so the one uh, you, you must remember, oh, not just AYE can see Normanton, uh, even the West Coast Highway can see Normanton. Okay, so that's why from both sides there. The second pointers, it has to be unique. So something that is more unique, more rare, uh, it will also demand a higher value and also can preserve the value better. So for Normanton, it is unique because of what? I hardly see a project that is at a, such a big scale. Uh, the day when I drove into the site uh, to look at the, to visit the show flat, I passed by all the towers that were being built because uh, it was, it's, uh, the, the, the lower floors are all built already. It is huge, okay? So imagine this kind of landscape we hardly can find in Singapore because Singapore really do not have that many land that have such a big landscape here. And this is one project by itself. So it is very unique in that sense. Third thing, historic. Normanton Park, the previous Normanton has been there for a long time. So the name is already there. Even you know that from AYE, you turn up from Normanton Road. So that's why it has some value to it, okay? Limited, again, not so many projects in Singapore have such a big landscape and uh, such a vast kind of uh, greenery, okay? And functional, okay? Uh, if you look at the Normanton uh, layout, okay, you will you realize that the it's very, no, no wastage to the layout. 
Okay, it is basic, okay, but it's very functional. Okay, uh, no odd corners, no rounded shape. All these things is very functional. Okay, and it has a future story. Why? Uh, if you know the surrounding, okay, uh, our Singapore government has putting a lot of money for the biopolis, for the fictionopolis, or even to the science park. So all the money that the government put in, the government make sure that it, it will it will run well. Okay, so this. Yes, we, we talk about the future of the, like some of the district that we have, the future plans, but those are in the future. But Normandon area is already having such an established science parks there. Okay, so that's why you do not need to wait for the future. Everything is already in place for, for, for this. Okay, so that's why it's very important that all these six pointers really, really help a property to conserve and preserve its value. Because this personal experience is that we have a lot of tenants that is from overseas. A lot of time, they, they are the one who tell us that, hey, uh, Chris, uh, I want to look at this project. We will be surprised at how come you know about this project? Because uh, these are the projects that uh, is the, the, the experts, the foreigners, they know about these projects here, okay? So same thing, I just mentioned a few names over there, that is, uh, like Interlace. Interlace being a very uh, big project and also iconic uh, structure, okay? A lot of uh, my customers from UK, they know about this project. They also know who is the architect for this. And uh, no matter will be the next project because of its, its size and its, uh, its uh, distinguished uh, uh, landscape uh, for this whole project there, okay? So remember, iconic properties will always be remembered, okay? So when you choose a property for investment, please must be iconic. Don't choose a property because it is just cheap, okay? It has to be cheap and iconic, that's the best. But if it's not so cheap but iconic, you, might, you may also consider, okay? So this is how it looks like. I uh, mean, all the perspective our sales staff have uh, to show you. Okay, the fourth key. Do I have the love key? Okay, so this is also a way for me to share with you um, how to make sure that you can have an exit strategy in the future when you want to sell away your property investment. Okay, we, I call this the love key. So property is very different than things that we buy uh, on a daily basis or monthly basis. I don't know, ladies, maybe you would like to buy a handbag on a weekly basis. So if you have a handbag, you know, a gentleman buy wine for collection, buy watches, buy supercar. Property is not as simple as all these four items that I show you, okay? If you want, if you don't have a handbag, ladies can just put it into the, the, the wardrobe, forget about it, okay? Gentlemen, guys, don't like the wine that you purchase, just drink it, okay? I'll give it to a friend. Watches, same thing. You can also sell watches on eBay, which is uh, which is very easily. Car, just approach a car dealer and sell away. You can get it sold. But the property is something that it's not that today I want to sell, tomorrow it will go sold. Not like stock and share that today I don't like this stock anymore. I want to sell away. You just click on online, immediately it's being sold. It's a matter of you make money, how much you make, or you lose money, how much you lose. But a property, it is illiquid. Okay, it's li illiquid means that it is not liquid like you want to sell, just sell. But that's why property, it has a very good thing to it, okay? Because buy things that we like, buy things that other likes too. This is the point that I want to show with you. What, 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 what does it mean? Similar to the value that I just showed you for the Pulau Bin House. Huh? If you buy things that you like, okay? Do not buy things because it is cheap, okay? But just have, no matter, it's one of the cheaper projects you can find already, yeah? but it's something that is cheap and good, okay? But buy things that you that we like so that others will also like it. Okay. So if you so as, as good as when you buy something, buy property, just think of the next time when you sell away, will there be people liking this 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 uh, property as well? Okay. So that's why these two pointers are related. The exit strategy. Uh, of course, because I have a topic on this exit strategy, but I just highlighted these two very important from, from my topic there. Buy things that you like and also buy things that other people like. Yeah, so that's why we there's a general, general term uh, for this. It's called the universal common appeal. Okay, uh, universal common appeal uh, means that if the general public there are more people who like this, okay, then the sales will be better. Okay, so that's why if you look at the Northampton Park unit type, okay, uh, it has various from one bedroom, two one plus study, two compact premium, two plus study, three premium compact, four bedroom premium, okay, five room terrace, shop house, and restaurant. Again, this is one of the rare projects that one project itself consists of all this unique type, okay? So, and again, the sizes are also just nice, okay? Of course, some of you may say that, oh, it's, it's a bit small, but I just I tell you this, 
the, the market, the preference of smaller unit is on the rise. Okay, of course, the uh, construction cost is higher. That's why people uh, want to have more affordability. The sizes are smaller. Second thing, cleaning up a unit of a smaller sizes is even easier. Okay, do not buy a big house until you regret buying it because you have a big house to clean eventually. And it's also easier to manage for this sense here. Okay, then second portion here, the 100 over facilities that Nonpetan has. Okay, this is something very unique even for me. I have not seen a project that has such a huge amount of facilities uh, in a project. So this, these two specific characteristics of uh, this uh, non patent park, um, it appeared to a very big generic public. Okay, so that's why it's called the common uh, universal uh, uh, appeal. Why is this important? Which this such uh, uh, appeal to the, to the more people, the transactions, for both rental and sales will also be higher in the future, you know, maybe five years, 10 years down the road. When a project that we have seen that the transactions of rental and sales higher, the property will also be more popular in the sense, okay? And because of this, the market will remember about this project for a longer time, okay? So we do see that a lot of, a lot of projects that is in like the Tadokura area sometimes, there are the smaller apartments I just tell you, I, I, even I myself also do not know the name of the apartments anymore uh, after it was completed one or two years later, okay? Because, because no one talk about it anymore, okay? So for an agent like us, we need to put in a lot of effort to, to market the, 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 the unit in the market, okay? But for projects that is more prominent, which have this common uh, appeal, for us, when we put it online, put it on the, uh, to, the, to the market, we get response already. Okay, so that's why it's very important for you to remember this, especially from a buyer's point of view. Okay, and these figures here, I've known this is a news article that uh, Business Times has published in uh, November last year. Okay, so it talked about foreign buyers. But just want to, want to highlight to you is that if you look at the, the higher volume price range, it is from half a million onwards up to about 2 million. And Normandon Park price range, okay, it should be also around this range here. And look at the transactions. Who are the buyers? Singaporean. Okay. To me, when I market uh, my overseas projects, so like for London or for example for, for, for Thailand, I always ask, ask the people, buy projects that the local will rent and buy eventually. Okay, because your market pool of uh, buyers and tenants will be much bigger than those projects that is more niche. Same thing, for example, in Singapore. Do you know that for prime location properties like District 9 and 10, first thing, the rental return is not as high as uh, RCR or also CCR or OCR in Singapore. And also, it takes a longer time for us to sell away uh, more prime properties in the District 9 and 10 especially. Okay? But of course, the capital gain can be very big because of the quantum. But the generic market is actually within the half a million to the two million price range. Okay? That's why sizes is correct. Uh, number of bedrooms are correct, price is correct for Normanton. That's why I, I, I want to bring this up to you to remind you is that for the futures to come, it will be easier for you to find a buyer or a tenant for Normanton Park. Okay, so this is a highlight for, for this key number four. Okay, the last key, which is the most important key. Okay, I call it the key. So what is the key? Well, the key is, I know that now you have seen the show flat, you have given checks and you want to buy a unit. Some of you may be still sitting on the fence. Um, I do not. I do not like sales talk. I do not like to tell a customer that oh, based on this data you should buy whatever. No, no. I always like to tell uh, customers or yourself that this is the current facts. Okay, and you decide whether is it a time for you to buy or is it a decision for you to buy. That's why it's always facts. So I always like to remind uh, our customers is that please you must differentiate between facts and fictions. Okay, because why when you are when you are a buyer, you have a lot of fictions that comes in. Think about this, about that. Same thing as a seller as well. So I compile a few of the topics that uh, you, you need to consider, okay? What is happening now, okay? That whether you should buy or you should buy two units or three units, this is up to you, okay? First topic, savings, okay? I'm not talking about your savings. I'm talking about Singaporean savings, okay? So Singapore, Singaporeans, love to save money, okay? And uh, last year, okay, until this year, we are always in the top 10 uh, save the countries with the highest saving rates, means that the people like to save money, okay? 
Singapore are based on 2020, it is at number six out of the whole world. So what this means is that Singaporeans are rich. Okay, I think you just read the Singapore uh, our newspaper. We have more and more HDBs that is above one million. Okay, which I never heard of this when I first started my real estate career. I remember uh, Jurong Pandan area uh, HDB was three room flat was going for about one hundred and sixty thousand. Now I don't know where I can get a one hundred sixty thousand HDB, uh, you know, to buy. Okay, but Singaporean this why. Because of the savings, even though now we are in COVID, okay, we are not as bad as a lot of other countries. Okay, like for example, if you look at the uh, the, the 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 US, um, the the jobless rate is very high. Uh, depending on the government's uh, fund, is very very high. People live week by week. Okay, for Singapore, we are lucky. We still do not fall into that thing. In fact, some of the businesses are actually making more money than before COVID. Okay, so those of you who are affected. Okay, uh, you are affected in the sense of maybe some pay cut, but you are not jobless. Okay, you are still in the good, uh, good uh, environment here. This one, this one is due to savings. Okay, and these savings have helped us. Why Singapore property market never see a downturn in 2020 where the COVID was at the worst that we have seen yet. Okay, second pointer that is happening now, affordability. Okay, so what is about affordability? You look at how much Singaporeans' income has increased in the past 20 years, okay? This is the median monthly household income from work, including CPF contribution. In the year 2000, okay, on the average, the median income is about 4,005 for one household. As of 2019, okay, the median income has increased to about close to 9,000 9, plus, 9,400 something. Okay, you look at in the past 20 years, how much the income has increased. Okay, it is still on the line of going up. And this is from Sing, uh, Singstat. Huh? So because of this, that's why it makes sense that why property prices keeps going up. Okay, because Singaporeans still afford to buy property, better property, just like yourself. If, you, if 20 years ago, you have a HDB flat or you have a private property, just tell me, it, you should be making a lot of money, okay? Because from the capital gain from your investment plus your uh, monthly uh, salary or wages that comes in, very comfortably, you can upgrade to a very nice unit in Normanton Park, okay? So, so sometimes customers tell me that he has no money, but come to the show flat and see a show flat, but no money to buy. Um, I have some doubts, lah, huh? because if you have no money, you will not be coming to the show flat to buy. It's a matter of you liking the project or not. Okay, so that's why this is something that is very important to sustain our Singapore property prices and volume. Third pointer, inflow of funds. Okay, this is something that um, I personally believe that why our Singapore property prices is still maintaining so strong and in fact increase, because if you look at the amount of funds that flows into Singapore, uh, just one, two years ago, when Hong Kong have some unrest, there are already 4 billion US dollars that flows from Hong Kong to Singapore. Okay, that was like one, two years ago, was 2019. Okay, but if you look at the June last year's chart, which is the graph there, it was, was almost in how many billions of money that flows into a foreign currency deposit into Singapore. Okay, the amount of cash that is in Singapore is very, very high. Okay, and to my experience and to a lot of uh, experienced uh, investors and also real talk in the market, some of these funds will flow into the real estate segment. Okay, uh, that also explains why we have a lot of people uh, buying into real estate, especially some of the foreigners, okay, uh, buying into Singapore real estate. But yes, maybe you said that not the foreigners buying, but because of the, the liquidity of the funds are in Singapore, it makes the whole economy very lively. Okay, uh, even now with COVID, you know that if Saturday, tomorrow and Sunday, if you go to Orchard Road to have a restaurant, some restaurant you don't even have to queue because it's by reservation, because it's already full. Some restaurant you queue, maybe you can queue for three hours, then only you can get a seat. Okay, not just talking about very high end restaurant, I'm talking about a very generic day to day kind of restaurants. You still have to queue or make reservation. And because of the money is flowing in, so when the bosses of these uh, restaurants they make money, they are happy. They give maybe some better salary to the staff, the staff happy. So all this market is very active. This is what the government is doing, okay? 
But if you add on, just now the, the blue color becomes the black color. So this is the, the funds okay, that is in the domestic business unit and also the Asian currency unit. Okay? It is in 500 over billion in Singapore, which is a lot of money. Okay? Uh, of course, this news you have to read from uh, like Bloomberg and those things because they have all these figures here. I just want to tell you, Singapore has a lot of money. <laughs> so all this money is really flowing into real estate segment. Okay, this is what we are seeing as a day-to-day -day basis talking to our customers here. Okay, that's why this supports the market very strongly. Okay, the next thing, okay, you know that uh, the US especially has been doing their quantitative EC, we call the QE. Okay, at the beginning of the year, actually I did a session like this before. Uh, it was the, the QE money, it was at about 4.3, 4.5, uh, uh, trillion. But in the span of last year until this year, QE from the US has already up to 7.24 trillion. Okay, so we're talking about trillions. Huh? And yes, this is happened in the US. But Singapore being one of the financial hub in the world, some of the funds are actually come came into Singapore and coming into Singapore as well. So because of the funds coming in, and again, it's in trillion. Singapore has a lot of liquidity in the financial sector. Okay, the commerce, the, everything is very, very liquid. A lot of people are, are transacting a lot of things uh, uh, in, in our country here. That's why with all these things here, and QE is not just US is doing, a lot of countries are, are doing. You know that basically QE is just printing money lah, in, in the layman's term. So there are a lot of money that is being printed uh, or created in a way. Okay, and even... Singapore, Japan, Europe, UK, all these places are a lot of this uh, money are being printed. Even Singapore is giving a lot of uh, this helping to our COVID uh, situation here. But there's one thing, okay, that you have to remember. Quantitative easing increases inflation, okay, because the more money is being created, the, mon the value of the money is, is getting uh, lesser, okay. So it means that you need um, more to use more money to go and buy the same thing again. Okay. But real estate is something that is always hedged against inflation. Okay. So that's why your $1 million in the bank, if you put in the bank now versus you put the $1 million in the property now, okay, 10 years down the road, you will know what I mean. Okay. But I don't want you to regret until then. Okay. Because the value of your 10 million, 1 million is no longer 1 million anymore. Okay, so that's why this, this is something that, of course, I cannot go too, too deep for tonight's session. This is something that you should consider and, and, and ask yourself about this question here. Okay, another pointer, the fourth pointer, tax amnesty. This is something that I highlighted to a lot of uh, uh, consumer, especially yourself, uh, for I think about two, three years now, which is the Indonesian uh, government that encouraged the Indonesians to bring back their wealth in foreign countries, okay? And then they will be able to use the money uh, again, uh, after they bring it to Indonesia and then they bring out again. So how much money are we talking about? Uh, they are about 366 billion worth of money, US dollar, okay, that brought back to Indonesia. And you know that out of the 25% of the 366 billion, actually there were funds and part in Singapore here, okay, including real estate and cash funds or all the investment here. So the timeline for tax amnesty actually uh, ended in 2019. But because of COVID, uh, they cannot come into Singapore to do purchase here. So it was being delayed. Okay. But lately, we are seeing some of the Indonesians actually restart to buy properties again in Singapore. Uh, and they are not just buying the very high end, they are also going down to a more uh, uh, OCR and also RCR. So because of this, the competition in Singapore now, not just, uh, you know, like we always say that from mainland China or from Malaysia, Indonesia has stopped to buy because Indonesia has stopped buying property for quite many years where the tax amnesty was in place. So this is another trend that we are seeing what's happening now currently in Singapore. Okay. And the one, whatever you have in your bank and is also in your wallet is our Singapore dollar. Singapore dollar, okay, of course, we all know that it's well controlled by the MAS. And the MAS has also said that they want to ease the policy of uh, the increment of the value of Singapore dollar means, means that it is cheaper la, for Singapore dollar. 
is this good or is this bad? Okay, for us, we are traveling overseas, it could be bad because we need to use more Singapore dollar to exchange for foreign currencies. But don't, don't forget, for foreigners, they want to bring money into Singapore, this is a golden opportunity because the weaker the Singapore dollar, they can exchange much more dollars from their currency here. Okay, so, and this has been controlled uh, with, the, with our Singapore uh, MAS system here. So, this is why we are seeing that foreigners are always investing in Singapore due to the stability of Singapore dollar. So even with ABSD, foreigners are still buying, okay? And they are paying ABSD. And some of the Singaporeans you're buying the second property, you are pay a lesser ABSD, but you don't want to buy because of the ABSD. Please, I'm telling you that there are a lot, a lot of people that pay a lot of ABSD because they want to bring their money into Singapore. So this also created some competition among our local uh, community purchase here. And that's why if Singaporeans, if foreigners are buying, then Singaporeans should seriously consider don't lose out in this, uh, in this uh, competition here, okay? Another, almost the last pointer here is our local demand, okay? So yes, uh, property market depends on foreigner, but you look at the chart here, the local demand is actually very, very high. We should look at this again, uh, the news article that I brought up earlier on. Singaporeans is still the majority buyers of properties, of non-landed properties in Singapore, okay? This was what's, what's the moral story. The moral story is that Singaporeans still have still buying properties. Okay, so don't talk about the combination from the foreigners. It's really, it's a very minor, a uh, small percentage that we are seeing here. The big bulk is Singaporean. Okay, so that's why when Singaporean buying a property, we are buying a home here. Okay, we are not just buying a property just purely for them. A lot of us are buying property as a as a home here. That's why this okay, um, the cooling measures that you see. It is still in place. Nothing has been changed. Okay, there are some tweak and tweak here, but nothing has been changed. But if you look at the volume of our Singapore property for the past ten to eleven years, it is still very very strong. Uh, in fact, uh, what we are seeing uh, after the circuit breaker until now, especially for new home sales, the demand of buying is very very strong. Okay, I know that some of the salesperson has been telling you that, uh, yeah, there are a lot of people coming and see and buy, but this is from my personal view because I've seen a lot of launches. Okay, I'm very, very active in this sense here. It is really a lot, a lot of buyers in, in, in currently looking to buy into a, a home or a project or the, or the property. So now I want to give you a last scenario here. If moving forward, okay, some of you, it could be sitting on the fence waiting for the government to, uh, really, to, to stop some cooling measures, okay? what will happen? Because some of you may be thinking that, oh, I don't want to pay the ABSD, I want to wait. Do you know that once you wait and the cooling measures are being re relieved, do you know that the property prices will be most likely going up again? Okay, look at the current situation. Okay, so this one with the cooling measures, do you know that the volume and the prices are still going up? Okay, so will the government impose additional cooling measures to wait? Well, hard to say, this one only the government will know, but look at the current situation. Uh, we are in the healthy situation here, which means that the property prices are still being contained, not overshoot by too much. Volume is very, very healthy. But one thing that I want to let you ponder, okay? Uh, I love my goldfishes, so that's why I have a lot of fish here. Some of you who are a first time buyer listening to, to me today, okay? Uh, you realize that a lot of the measures is protecting you, okay? As in you are first time buyer, you don't have to pay any ABSD. Um, first loan, you get the maximum loan and you are young, okay? So you are being protected. So if you don't buy now and you're waiting for the government to remove the cooling measures, do you know that you will be swimming in the big sea with all the big fishes, okay? That is, that is the real scenario that may happen. And some of you who are a savvy investors that listening to me, okay? You could be thinking of, okay, I also want to wait for the cooling measures to come and remove everything here. Same thing. Once the cooling measures is being removed, do you think that the property prices will shoot up again? <laughs> I tell you, people are queuing up overnight at the show flat just to buy a unit that they want. Okay. So that's why it's a very interesting scenario that we are in here. Okay. I'm not very, very long time in real estate. 19 years, so tampu chan, so tampu ton. Okay. But it's a very interesting uh, uh, things that we... we we are in our this uh this real estate business here okay so again those things that i presented to you these are the, the facts that is happening okay it is not something that uh created out of nowhere it is something happening which you can go and read out the news article here 
So that's why for Nomentum Park, it's one of the rare projects that uh, I will be able to put five keys to all the five values that I just shown you this uh, evening here. Okay, hardly I can put so many uh, ticks. Okay, usually it's three, but for the mental part, I can put five. The time key. Okay, you know what I meant. Okay, so no matter part, uh, no, no, no matter part fixed into it. Value key. Okay, the life key, the love key, and what is happening now. This is the this is the timing uh, for for you to consider uh, investing into no matter part. Okay. Uh, personally, this project itself, uh, it has, it is a very nice place for you to call home. Okay. If you were investors, I can I believe that when you get your house key, you may not want to rent it out for the first year. You may want to enjoy all the hundred over facilities that you have there. Looking at the uh, the houses there, okay, with the water feature in front. Looking at all the water pool features. Looking at the um the oh, what the almost a six story high. Uh, this uh, podium, which is at the below there, to, to clear up for all the landscape, everything there. And on the high floor unit, okay, you can look at the, the sea, okay, uh, beyond the uh, Cambridge Park there. And facing uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, Bona Vista area, you can see also the unlocked view of all the modern design of all the architectural buildings that is very nice. I think some of the units may also have a glimpse of downtown area. So it's a project that personally uh, you should seriously consider, okay. And uh, that's why uh, today, you know, uh, uh, we I try to do this uh, special presentation to you to make sure that uh, you are aware of the value of Normanton Park. Okay, and in fact, the value that I just showed it to you are not just for Normanton Park. In fact, you can use it for future investment in real estate uh, that may happen to you. Okay, so that's why uh, today uh, there is end of my five pointers and my five keys here. Um, I will.